Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. So at the end of July I ran a little poll. You guys decided that the witty pie was the item that you wanted me to review in greater depth. So I spent most of yesterday playing around with it, working out what it could do. So what is the witty pie? Witty pie has an on-off button here, so it provides an on-off switch for your Raspberry Pi. It also has a real-time clock with the battery backing, so it enables your Raspberry Pi to be switched on and off at a schedule that you set if you install the supplied software. There's also three different colored jumpers on the board which enable you to determine the default settings. This first one determines what happens when you power the Witty Pi board. It either needs a button press for you to activate the Pi or it doesn't. The default is it does need a button press. The middle one determines which GPIO port the LED is controlled by and this jumper governs which GPIO port is used for the shutdown. You can also power the Witty Pi board with a 5 volt supply other than micro USB using this connector here. It also comes with a stacking header so that none of the GPIO ports are inaccessible even the ones which are actually used. It uses I2C uh, but I think most of the other pins are not used apart from 4 and 17. So what about software installation? Well, it, the software installation went really well. There is an automatic script that if you just follow the two instructions that you have to type in the manual on page 6, the software installation worked brilliantly straight out of the box. This was on the most recent version of Raspbian. I should also mention at this point that I'm using a Raspberry Pi B Plus for this review. So this button acts as a safe on-off switch for the Pi. You should be able to press it to toggle the Pi on and off in a safe way whenever you want. But what makes this product different from the other on-off switches for the Raspberry Pi that I've seen before is the fact that you've got a real-time clock on there and you can use it to schedule shutdowns and boot-ups whenever you like. Let's have a look at how that's working. In a couple of moments you should see the Witty Pi fire up the Raspberry Pi. It's got a power supply connected here, HDMI monitor here, Ethernet here and keyboard dongle here. You can see every once in a while this LED pulses just to show you that the Witty Pi is in control. And it looks like it's starting up. So about one minute after it boots, what happens is it will sync the time with the, uh, with the real time clock. And you should see that appear on the screen in a moment, regardless of whether you log in or not. There we go, it's taken the real-time clock time and written it to the system. So I'm just going to put that back there and in about one minute the Witty Pi should shut the Pi down because I've put it on a two minute cycle on and off. There you go, looks like it's shutting down now. And away it goes. And in about two minutes it'll go back on again because I've put it on a two minute cycle. So that shows you the Witty Pi working, doing its job. So let's have a look at the Witty Pi software and what it can do. These are the files which are in the Witty Pi folder. And to activate the software you need to use sudo and then wittypi.sh so then when it starts it shows you your system time and the real time clock time and I've noticed it's usually within a few seconds but what you can do since the Pi is connected to the internet I'm going to use the software option number one 
to write the system time to the real time clock. So that's what I'm going to type down here, one, and that should change the real time clock so that it's more in line with the system time on the Pi, which is connected to the internet, so it should have grabbed the correct time. So that's writing it down now, and it says it's done. Any key to continue, and now you can see they're bang on, both the same, look at that. The real-time clock is now synced properly with the Pi. Great. You can do it the other way around. If your Pi is not net-connected, uh, usually it will do this at startup for you after about one minute and I think I've already videoed that happening. So the other options, option three gives you the possibility to schedule a startup. So what you can do there is you tell it it's the 20th today so I could tell it I want to switch on my Pi on the 20th at 23.00 one and it will schedule that for me it's going to go on at 11 o'clock tonight then it takes you back to the options menu again okay let's schedule a shutdown so I want it to go on the 20th which is today and we'll say 2302 two minutes after we started up no seconds on this one. I don't quite know why, but that's the way the software works. So now it's set that. So that's how to do scheduled startups and scheduled shutdowns. That just works. The other thing you can do, you can actually choose option five, which gives you the possibility of having a script with a whole list of startup and shutdown times in it. There are five preset ones. Let's just have a look at those. So you can see five scheduled scripts and they all have different timings in. If we choose number five, that will switch the pie on for five minutes every 20 minutes. But in a moment what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at that. So we'll exit now, choose option six and exit. And let's have a look at that script that we've just created and see how it works. So there's a file here now that was created when we executed option 5 called schedule.wpi. Let's now have a look at that. If you want to edit it, you have to use sudo because it's owned by the root user. Uh, but I want to nano it. Okay, so let's have a look at that. And what it will show you is the script has a start date and an end date. You can see the end date is in 2025, so it's going to go on for 10 years. And in this line, this is where you define how long the Pi goes on for. And this is where you define how long the Pi goes off for. Now what you can do is you can monkey about with this. So if I were to set, oops, if I was to set that for 10 and 10, what, and then save it, what would happen is that the Pi would go on for 10 minutes and off for 10 minutes. And it would alternate that ad infinitum until we change it. So let's do that. Then what we need to do to make that actually active is either reboot the Pi or we can run this shell script here called run script using sudo. So sudo run script dot sh and that will activate the schedule dot wpi file and that shows us the next scheduled shut down and start up. Each time it starts up it will roll forward and change the settings for the next shut down and start up. It can sometimes happen that you can lock up the witty pie i.e. make it confused for so if it's on a scheduled start up and shut down like we just did and then you shut it down manually next time you boot it might not know where it is so there is a way to reset that 
firstly, you can delete this schedule.wpi file that we just made. You'd need to sudo rm schedule.wpi. In fact, I'm going to do that now. sudo rm schedule.wpi. So that gets rid of that. But if you ever need to cancel the startup and shutdown times and just have them unset completely, what you can do is you can remove the battery on the witty pie and leave it for about one minute for the capacitors to run out and then it will be reset, factory reset to nothing. I have suggested to Sean that they perhaps add that facility in the software so the next time they reissue, so it'll probably be version 3 or 2.5 or something like that, they're going to add that feature if they can, which is great. So that's about all there is to show you on the Witty Pi. Overall, I'm quite impressed with this board and the fact that it only costs about £12 for all that functionality and it looks nicely made as well, I think it's really good. It's made by UU Gear from the Czech Republic and there'll be a link on the screen so that you can see how to find them. This was Alex Eames for Raspi.tv. Thank you for watching.